My name is Soyoung Kim, and I'm the writer-director for Spark and Light. I think initially we were thinking, or I was thinking, well, maybe we should do something comedy or a funny story because I've never done a comedy before. And I thought, well, why not? You know, it's an opportunity to um, practice different part of your brain and, and different type of genre because I've never done that. So I was trying to force myself to do it, but it was just so painful. And <laughs> And of course, we were under time constraint, you know. So, um, of course, Brad, the producer, is like, you only have another day. Just go for it. Just just do it, you know. And I had sketched out the whole scenario of, like, Ugly Duckling adaptation and their trolls in Iceland. And this young woman gets found by trolls and she gets raised, you know. But all the trolls tell her, oh, you're so ugly because they don't look like the other trolls. I mean, she doesn't look like other trolls, so they think she's ugly. So we were going to do this adaptation. Of course, it's a classic, you know, fairy tale, so everyone would know the reference. But then I just felt like, oh, I just don't feel like it's, it's something that um, I could really, like, say it's mine, you know. So, so then um, I had about 24 hours to come up with something new, and then, I don't know, I had... Uh, very little sleep and I woke up and I said, okay, I'm gonna just like write about this young woman named Elizabeth, you know, so. And um, it just came out very organically. And I, I don't know, for me, like, if I reflect back on different stories that I write, I don't think I have control over what the story is. I think um, often the story picks me or like, hey, you're gonna tell this story you know, so I just kind of have to let that happen. And that's <laughs> what happened. <laughs> Lack of sleep, s you know, very short amount of time, and then the pressure just kind of let Elizabeth come out. I feel like it, it really worked together. Like that morning when, when I was writing, I said, well, it has to kind of, it, it gives you like structure somehow. Like it gives you like, boundaries and, and I'm the type of person who work really well under constraints. It's like you have these constraints now make something out of it, you know? So it felt much more organic for me than if I was doing something like, okay, you have to showcase this or anything. It just felt like, okay, Elizabeth exists in this space and these are things that she needs to, um, to come alive. So I think the first thing that came was the blanket, you know, that covers her and comforts her and and then from there like oh we need some sketchbooks because actually she is part of that design and she is the creator of these ideas you know so then okay then if you are then what kind of dreams can you have if you're under these situation you know so okay she could have these kind of dreams that are and they kind of in in you know um they kind of pull these memories that are happy memories of your mom and who do you connect to and you know it's like who's your comfort zone and what are the things that you uh, get inspiration from you know so I think these kind of like all these elements go into this big pot you know to make the soup and make the flavor just perfect so I think all those the the collection comes in and then these elements of like cat and they come alive and become these, I don't know, objects, but then they become part of the character, you know. So it was, it was a great um, evolution for me. I've always been kind of like obsessed with relationships and family dynamics and, you know, what that means to an individual and stuff. And I guess I'm just, I, I'm always trying to understand or, or um, develop my understanding, I guess. It's, it's just all kind of very personal, you know, sense of like who's part of your family, what creates this environment for you so you could blossom as an individual and be creative and challenge yourself. All these things that we need, you know, as an individual. Like, and I think, I, mean, I don't know, it's, it's for me like, um, it's a learning experience, you know. So that's what I, <laughs> what I want to learn more about and understand more about, you know. I think it's true and I think it's great that you guys are giving, um, you all are giving empowering women voices and, and directors and writers. And, um, I think it just needs to have, we in general need to 
open up more opportunities and support other women, myself as well in the future, you know, help a mentor younger generations of actors and writers and directors so that we could all kind of come up together. I think it's, it's just that um, it's an industry that's full of men and it has been that way for so long that it's, we're just kind of starting to get our feet in and, and be able to, um, you know, vocalize our, our stories. So, yeah, I hope in the, in the future it will happen more and there will be a commonplace, you know, that it would be like 50% women, 50% men, and it wouldn't be an issue, you know. Um, that's what I hope. It might take some time. I think in my, in my deep um, sense of who I am, I am Korean, but I, you know, everything that I learned since birth until I was 11 years old, is, is um, all that culture of, um, in, in Korea, respecting the elders and, you know, all that stuff. But I got this wonderful opportunity when I was a child to grow up in a farm. And I feel like a lot of that nature and being in nature kind of seeped into who I am as well. So I feel really blessed about that. And I think somehow, like, being in the States, being in, uni being in the United States and being educated in the States gave me opportunity to kind of nurture that a lot more and help me grow um, mm -hmm. to become who I am today. So I feel very like balanced at this moment. Um, I don't know how I, I would feel 10 years from now, but right now I feel like, oh wow, things are in balance and who I am and what I can be and what I can do in the future. So yeah, I think that's about all I know. <laughs> this is Mimi Tales number seven, and seven is my favorite and my lucky number, so I feel like it was all match made in heaven. <laughs>